everybody, we have yet another very special needs rescue here at Snake Discovery that was recently surrendered. Everybody, please meet this ornate box turtle. This ornate box turtle, as you can see, has quite a few deformities and health conditions going uh, against him right now. So today we are going to talk about what causes this to happen, how to prevent it, and how we're going to attempt to treat him. First, ornate box turtles should look like this. As you can see, they have a very smooth and round shell, they have nice bright eyes, they have short claws, etc, etc. And here we have who we have called Edward Scissorhands. This poor guy suffers from quite a few health concerns or health issues right now. Now, and they can all be derived by one single issue in a box turtle's environment. I mean, just pointing out his health issues right now, he has a severely overgrown beak, which is often called a duck beak when it gets to this severity in box turtles. He has very overgrown nails on each one of his four feet, so those we're gonna have to take care of today. He also has a severely malformed shell. So, all of these issues can be caused by one simple thing that is wrong with their environment. So we're gonna kind of knock out some uh, options of what could have happened here because he had mostly a good setup. He was, according to his surrender sheet, he was provided with UVB. Granted, I don't know, I didn't say when the UVB light was replaced. So if it hadn't been replaced in like years and years and years, this guy is 11 years old, by the way, maybe that contributed to some of the shell deformities, sorry. But these deformities can be caused by something else too. So next, substrate. Substrate was cypress mulch and I guess it was deep enough for him to burrow in, so that's that's perfect. He was given enough room. He had a 20 long enclosure by the sounds of it, and so that's enough room. It's a little on the smaller side, but you know, it would work, I guess. It wouldn't cause him to have these issues. Next, and one of the things that was wrong with his environment, but I don't think caused these issues, was that he was kept at like room temperature, it sounds like. Between 70 and 85 degrees uh, is the temperature range that he was kept at, according to his surrender form. And although that is a little on the cool side, this is a Midwest native species of box turtle. They're found from the center of the U.S. all the way down south through Texas. So for being a somewhat northern species of turtle, they can tolerate a range of temperatures, including slightly cooler temperatures like 70. Um, so I don't think that contributed to all of these health issues. I think the problem was his diet. Ornate box turtles in the wild eat a lot of insects. So grasshoppers, crickets, they'll eat roaches, they'll eat earthworms, and they'll sometimes eat carrion or dead animals. Occasionally they'll eat berries too, but not that frequently. So as you can imagine, they need a pretty protein high diet. This guy was fed primarily box turtle pellets and the number two ingredients in this is first ground wheat, second corn gluten meal. So there's not much protein to these at all. In addition to this, he was fed a lot of fruit and it did say a protein variety, but I think because he was fed mostly pellets and a lot of fruit, a lot more fruit than he should have, that is what causes box turtles to have these deformities. It's usually a lack of a certain nutrient or vitamin in their diet that causes the nails to overgrow, the skin to become flaky, the beak to overgrow, and the shell to become disfigured here. So I think all of this is caused by the root problem of his diet for 11 years. Let's take a closer look here. So we have, again, now that we kind of know what we're looking at, we have some abnormal curvature to his shell here. All of his scutes seem kind of smushed together here in the middle, and they're all malformed here. So I can't imagine the uh, pressure on his internal organs. His shell is just pressing around him, which poor little guy. Uh, his nails are terribly long and need to be trimmed. He has this flaky skin that we were mentioning. And finally, he has this horribly overgrown beak. And actually, I'm just now noticing his eyelid, his upper eyelid especially, seems pretty inflamed. That's a sign, eye issues in many reptiles is a sign of vitamin A deficiency. And it sounds like with his diet, he probably wasn't getting much vitamin A. So vitamin A can also cause this flaky skin, disfigured shells, ex or, um, extra long nails, and so on and so forth. So I think this is a problem with lack of vitamin A, which in medical or fancy terms would be hypovitaminosis A. Hypo means lack of, hyper means too much of. So hypovitaminosis A is what this guy is suffering from at a very severe rate or level at this point. So to prevent this from happening, if you have a box turtle, which in my opinion are one of the most neglected species of reptiles out there because they can live in terrible, terrible conditions and it happens far too 
too frequently that they are neglected and things like this happen where he's still alive somehow, but he's he can't be feeling good. So to prevent this, again, just make sure they have the right diet, make sure they have the right lighting, make sure the entire setup is as it should be to best replicate what they would encounter and experience in the wild. Otherwise, things like this happen. So what we're going to do today for this little fella is we are first and foremost going to give him a nail trim. We're also going to give him a beak trim as best as I can. For his nails, we're probably going to clip off the edges here. When I do nail trims, usually I can just dremel all the way down, but when they're this long, that would take a very long time. So I'm going to trim them first. I might hit some quicks. I have quick stop on me just in case, and then I'm going to round them out so they're an appropriate length. In other animals like birds, dogs, and cats, if they have overgrown nails, the quick starts to overgrow too, so it's best to recede them slowly by grinding them down with a dremel bit by bit by bit and working them to an appropriate length. However, if they are impeding their ability to move, like this guy's nails are so long, and honestly, they're kind of clear, so I don't see, I can see his quick actually, look at that. If you look close, you might be able to see it, maybe it's better in person than on camera. About an eighth of an inch down, his each of his claws is a darker area, and that's his quick, or blood supply. So if I were to cut it past that, they would start to bleed a little bit, which I'm gonna, I, I might hit the quick on some of these claws, because the quick is a little bit longer on others, but I'm gonna try my best to clip right before the quick, and then use a Dremel to round it out. If they do bleed though, I mean the important thing right now is just to get these nails at a more uh, reasonable length for him to be able to actually walk around. So, let's get to grooming. Oh man. This poor dude. I honestly don't know how you let a box turtle get to this point before doing something. I mean, at least he's here so we can take care of him as best we can, but I'm honestly a little worried that this may be a euthanasia case. I really hope it isn't. We're gonna at least give him a shot. He seems, he seems pretty mobile. I mean, look at him. He scooches around. So uh, I think if anything, this will just make him move a little bit better, but I am concerned about the ability of him to actually be able to eat with that beak overgrowth. So, oh, he looks like the, um, there's a character in the Nightmare Before Christmas, the really short guy with the big, the, the big mouth or whatever it is. Yeah, he looks kind of like that. So anyway, we're going to start this guy off by clipping these nails and then we'll dremel them. If I clip a quick, I have a quick stop here to stop the bleeding. So we are all set there. And if you ever do any nail trims, I'd highly recommend having quick stop. So this guy, I don't think you could bite me even if you tried. Um, let's just try our first claw, our first nail here. Oh, you did try to bite me, you jerk. Okay, fine, I'll start back here. You can't reach me if I do your back feet. So we're gonna start by taking this, clipping all these nails, oh, okay. Clip, ooh, this is a long one, long quick. Might hit it, I'm sorry. Oh, a little bit, okay. So you can kinda see in this one that I just clipped there, there's a little teeny bit of blood coming out, which honestly I'm not surprised because I mean, I took that much of his nail off. So what we're gonna do is just put a little bit of a quick stop on it and that'll stop it instantly. If you use these for wounds on yourself, it stings so bad, but it does work. It does stop it like right away, it cauterizes it. All right, so we're gonna just keep on going here. Here we go. Now these claws are an appropriate-ish length. Look at that. They're a little bit um, oddly shaped though because they were trimmed. So next we're going to take out our handy dandy pet zoom nail trimmer that I've had for like a decade and still works better than the other ones that I've bought to try to replace this guy. Yeah, I have to tape it together, but you know what? It still works great. So I'm going to just gently dremel and round out every one of his claws here so that they aren't so bluntly clipped. There we go. They're not perfect, but he'll be able to now that he can like put pressure on his feet as he walks around and therefore on his nails, I should rather say. He should be able to just through normal walking around kind of grind down and smooth out or round out rather each one of these nails. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for. But hopefully the uh, little bit of clipping or a lot of clipping, a little bit of Dremel work will get him off to the right start. So next we have to try to work on that beak. Yes, we do, mister. I don't quite know how I'm gonna tackle that. But I mean, since it's growing, I mean, just what I'm looking at here, since it's not growing down like it should, it's growing out. 
out like a duck. I think I'm just gonna have to take off a little bit to kind of line it up because it's a bit crooked too if you look at how it's aligned. So I'm gonna try to shorten it as best I can and this guy will probably just need regular trimmings for the rest of his life or at least until his beak here which is ever growing just very slowly starts to grow downward like it should. So we're gonna see what kind of shape work I can do on his beak here. All right and for his beak I'm gonna use actually a pretty heavy duty Dremel. This is what I use for bigger birds and their claws. Uh, this is a smaller bit than I usually use but I think it'll help me navigate around his beak a little bit better just to get the bigger pieces off and then maybe for more fine detailed trim work or grooming I can use this little guy. I've used him before for beaks for birds and it seems to work pretty well. So why not a turtle beak? All right the first thing we have to do is get a good grip around his head and for tortoises and box turtles a trick for that is to tickle their back feet. Look at that he pushed his head right out. So now I just have to be quick and get a good grip on him before he sucks it back in. Ah, like that. All right, let's try it again. This is why it works well with two people. One person tickles while the other person grabs. Yeah, this might take a little bit. Change my mind. I'm gonna use a different Dremel bit because that last one, this one is just too fine, so it's gonna take too long or it's gonna just take a long time to grind down that beak. So I'm gonna do that one that's a little bit coarser so that the process is a bit shorter. It kind of grinds it down quicker. This little guy is just not having it. He says, you know, you did all my nails. You did some work on my beak. Got a little bit of that trimmed off. I'm trying to leave the top beak alone because it just goes out. So I'd just be receding it in. And I'm really trying to work on that bottom beak. But he says no more today. And when a box turtle says that, there's no way you can convince them to say otherwise. I mean, they're called a box turtle because they have this really neat hinge across their plastron or lower shell that uh, allows them to close up like a box. He doesn't seem to be able to close very well. But in addition to the hinge, they all can also can just suck into their shell and when they do this there is no chance of you being able to reach in and get a good grip on their head for a beak trim. You need them to come out of their shell, grab it yourself firmly and securely and then do the grooming. So since he is refusing to come out, which I don't blame him honestly, I'm gonna just let him stay overnight in a quarantine bin and we'll come back and see if he's feeling better tomorrow. Here is his quarantine bin by the way, just something very simple. I really want to see what his first poop looks like. So we just have tile, little water dish, uh, a hide that he really likes. We've had him for a couple of days now and he is isn't eating and yes those are his nails that I trimmed off. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them but they're there for now. Uh, and he we've had him for a couple days. We've tried to feed him like a normal like protein based salad. He hasn't been interested in it so unfortunately I think we're gonna have to leave some pellets in here overnight just to see if he eats those because maybe that's just what he's used to and from there if he eats them then we can like move onwards to transitioning him to something more healthy. If he doesn't even eat those then well we have more serious um, decisions to make. But let's hope you start eating for us and regardless we're gonna check in tomorrow and try to get more off of that beak. All right I was able to uh, groom actually quite a bit enough that I uh, as much as I want to get off of his beak here I did leave some on purposely. I didn't film it because he came out of his shell and it was a good moment. I didn't have I didn't want to put the camera up or set it up and have him suck back in but we got some progress done on his beak here. I left a little bit of an overlap right here because I still want him to be able to like fully chew and like grab a bite of food and with how his beak is so malformed here I don't want him to just have to like gum all his food so here he could actually chomp down make a break in a, a worm or something and we're gonna see actually if we can convince him to eat a worm here we gave him a salad today with some of the pellets which he didn't eat overnight and some greens but uh, we're trying just a variety of stuff to see what he wants to eat we also added some like grain-free dog food in here that's uh, frozen and thawed didn't want any of it unfortunately so we're gonna see if we can convince him to eat a worm here. I doubt he's going to because of the beak trim today, but we'll see, maybe. Hey buddy, look, look at this tasty worm. You can do it, I know you can. You haven't eaten anything with us yet. Oh my gosh, he's trying to eat. Buddy, here, get it, I know, I know it's tough with your beak. Come on, you can do it. Oh my gosh, look at him go! Yay, he ate something! Well, wait, he hasn't eaten it yet. He's, he's trying. You can do it. You can do it. Oh my gosh, you're trying so hard. You've got spirit though. Oh, you missed it. Ah, yes. He's eating for us. This is amazing. So this is why I tried to leave his beak kind of long so that it could actually make a connection on the sides so we could take bites rather than just gumming it up. Come on, come on. You can do it. Come on. Oh my gosh, you're going to have to learn how to re relearn how to eat, aren't you? There you go. Get it. Get it. Oh, you spit it out. Okay. Well, this is amazing. 
because I was honestly a bit worried because he didn't want to eat anything for us. I was thinking that he might have to be euthanized because he was too far deformed, but oh my gosh, look at you. He's gonna have to learn how to eat here because uh, his beak is definitely a different shape than it was before, but that's okay. I think with his determination, he will be able to figure it out. Even if I, even if we have to tongue feed you a little bit, that's all right. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Look at him go. He figured it out. He got a bite of worm. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That is awesome. All right, so I think he's uh, slowly but surely learning how to eat. There you go. He got another bite. Get it. Keep it in. It, with the shortened beak, he does tend to use his tongue to push out the worm when he means to bring it in, but I think it's just going out because the, the beak isn't holding it in anymore. So he'll get the hang of it. He's definitely learning. And now we can finally get him on a proper diet with a lot of protein and not fruit and pellets. Okay, so this guy has officially eaten an entire worm minus that little chunk right here. And it seems like it doesn't matter if the worm is moving or if you just wiggle the food with the worm on it. He goes after it regardless. There you go, get it. I don't wanna have to hand Feet, or I don't want him to have to be hand fed though when he's like getting adopted out. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna take a worm and cut it up into chunks without the uh, veggies here. We just kind of put veggies in there to see if he ate it. But we're going to do uh, a worm chopped up on the dog food so the wiggling worm will grab his attention and then he can eat the dog food along with the worm and get more sustenance that way. So this guy though has a huge appetite. Can I just wiggle it? Would that, attract, would that get your eye? Nope, it has to be a worm. Aw, oh, he knows it's not a worm. All right, well, we're gonna come back tomorrow and see what else we can get him to eat. Wow, would you look at this huge mess that Edward Scissorhands has left us from overnight. That either tells me that he has just been having fun spreading his food around, or he has actually been eating, which I believe he actually has been eating because overall that looks to be like less food than there was to begin with last night. So, Edward, good job, buddy. Oh, there's a nice poop there too. That's perfect. That's the other thing I was waiting for. You ate and you pooped. That's fantastic. How does this poop look? That looks great actually for you. Okay, awesome. Nice, nice, okay, well, I wanted to leave him on the tiles, as you knew, so that I could get a nice look at his first poop with us. So check mark there, he's good to go. And I left him in this bin type setup because it's a lot calmer of an environment than being in Adoption Island. And I didn't want him to get too stressed to eat with a lot of people walking back and forth. But now that he's settling in with us with his new beak trim, he's shown me that he can eat with it. I think we are going to move him out into Adoption Island with some cypress mulch. Well, while I was getting his enclosure ready for Adoption Island, I put a new salad in this bin, this messy bin, and he decided to start going after the food in like five minutes. So this was a beautiful salad and he picked out all the worms uh, except for this last one that he's currently chasing down. But he has quite the appetite. He has a, an adorable personality. Dude, you actually get to go into Adoption Island here. <gasps> Here you go. Oh, Edward Scissorhands, check it out. You've got cypress mulch now. You've got things to hide under. You've got a nice water dish that you can climb into and soak if you want. But honestly, he probably won't be here terribly long because this is really all we can do for him. We gave him a nail trim, a beak trim, ensured that he was eating and passing food successfully. And really now it'll just be up to his new home to give him a proper diet. The only thing I'll probably recommend to his future owners is to add vitamin A capsules, well, break open an, a vitamin A capsule and empty the liquid on his food like I did with his salad here uh, just to bump up his vitamin A levels and we'll get this worm back in here too. But other than that it's uh, probably regular beak trims for this guy but he might not even need those with the proper diet. His beak might start taking care of, of itself. So buddy, oh I see you're checking out your water dish already. Here now you can have your salad. It has your favorite worm or your last worm in it. Oh, he doesn't even want that anymore. Yeah, he ate it all off camera, of course. Or he just wants to check out his new digs. But yeah, this dude has a huge personality and I'm glad we were able to take him in, get him fixed up as best as we can. And whoever adopts him, I would be curious to see how his beak looks in a year from now. So we'll see about that. Oh, there he goes into his half log. I figured he'd be going in there pretty quickly. And he also has the UVB up there too to help out with his shell as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's little rescue video about this very special little box turtle who's trying to squeeze himself into a half log. Thank you as always to our Patreon backers because you allow us to take in such crazy uh, cases here, rescue cases, and get them all fixed up and get them vet care and everything too. So thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>